Hello, hello, I'm Eric Stover, and this is my brother. Hey. Hi guys, I'm Kyle, aka Alpha Lance. You've heard his voice for DJ Skip and a lot of my other video projects in celebration of Valentine's Day since uh, I'm single. I'm single. We're all single here. Uh, I'm sure you guys are all single. I'm doing this video here, uh, Seven Friendships of Overwatch. Exploring the friend zone in Overwatch. Like each other. Just friends. Just friends. Just super friends. Uh, again, not to ruin any of these ships. These are not like my, what I hold in the game, whatever, but just exploring the idea of the different dynamics of friendships these characters have. So starting that off, we're going to go with the super friend of Overwatch. Roadhog and Junkrat. They've been paired together since they were announced. Play together in a way that's like, they just cause mayhem. Uh, as far as their friendship goes, there's a lot of great artwork out there of the two of them. Uh, kind of hitting the road together, whether they're in the outback in Australia or in some firefight, you know, generally Roadhog's kind of more protector or, or uh, taking care of things, but you know, in other times, like in the uh, one comic, right, they had uh, them taking on a job. And the official kind of, uh, Junkrat Roadhog comic, yeah. yeah and, how, and Junkrat was basically all talk, mm -hmm. the talker for the group, and Roadhog, Roadhog was stayed completely silent. Strong silent type. He is not as talkative in the game as a lot of the other characters. Back even when I first started playing this, it was a while until, until I heard Roadhog say something. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're kind of stuck together. Yeah, it's, it's that fun relationship. You see kind of more like a, a rival, and then they become best friends because see something in the other person that reminds them of themselves or something like that. Yeah, well, I was going to say, as much it's a as... Trope. Well, I was going to say, as much as I feel like Junkrat annoys Roadhog, I feel like maybe... That's kind of the whole thing of where if you're with someone for so long that, you know, anybody's going to annoy you, but on the other hand, they're your friend, they're your buddy, so it's okay to be annoyed at them because, you know, you're still going to save them and, and watch their back, etc. We've gone on enough, I want to talk about the next friendship. Hanzo and Symmetra. Okay, so now, the, well, the first one was very grounded in canon. This one almost entirely does not exist in the game at all, but I saw it in a comic, which I'm going to share, probably right over Kyle's face here. Uh, sure, cover me. Why not? And I, th I thought it was super interesting, super cute. Hanzo kind of is playing this mentor, older brother, kind of I've been gone down that path sort of thing to Symmetra. And the whole, the comic was playing up on the idea that both the characters have, have both of them have pasts that they are ashamed of or are kind of having to deal with the consequences of their actions from the past. Symmetra having worked with Vishgar, of course, and Hanzo having been, you know, the, the leader of a crime, you know, syndicate and killed his brother. The idea of the two of them as, as sort of outcasts among the Overwatch, because a lot of the Overwatch characters are, are heroes. They're, they're good guys. They're, they're trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, and these are two characters who have, have maybe done, maybe not evil things, but done less than noble things. Yeah, less than noble, for sure. Also, I find this really interesting because uh, this ship has a lot in common with the recent Symmetra buff. Oh. It's a long reach. I don't I don't think it's a long reach. On to the next one, Winston and Tracer. Uh, this is actually one that I like a lot because ever since the original cinematic, Tracer and Winston were easily shown being friends with uh, Tracer just calling out to Winston and Winston knowing that it was time for the fastball special. So these two just immediately were like, oh cool, they're definitely friends. And then the mm -hmm. holiday comic definitely just cemented that. Yeah, definitely a uh, strong friendship there. I mean, he's obviously, you know, the, the book smart big guy and she's kind of the quirky, chatty girl. Uh, he saved her, of course, with the, the, the time harness. Accelerator. And um, they've worked together. Isn't there like a picture of them when they're all a little bit younger, you know, at the Overwatch Academy or whatever? Uh, there's the graduation photo? Yeah. yeah. Next so, to a bunch of people ready to go and murder some robots. Yeah. So so they've got history together. They're, they're really, really nice. Uh, I still think she's a bit of a jerk with her stupid but monkey jokes, banana jokes, uh, but that's something, you know, if Winston's cool with it, I guess I'll accept it. I mean, she came to his house to celebrate Christmas. I think she can get, <laughs> I think she can get away with quite a bit. Next up, we Next have up. Lucio and Diva. Okay, Lucio and Diva. Uh, this one superstar kind of friendship, you know, he's a well-known world-class DJ, she's a well-known world-class streamer that I guess is in the military flying a mech around fighting robots 
He's fighting I mean, for that's freedom. Literally what it is, not I guess. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about my head cannon for that. Moving on to friendship though. So. Uh two people who um from the, the second we got the line about like wanting to exchange autographs, clearly these two know about each other. And maybe that was the first time they met, but then from there it's like, hey, we should totally like hang out and follow each other on Twitter mm-hmm. and do stuff together. And then you just imagine the two twenty somethings who are internationally acclaimed and famous and potentially rich probably went off and did some really cool stuff together. Um, so I, I got the idea of the two of them tweeting before a match <laughs> and like before a firefight and then replying to each other made firefight and getting yelled at by Soldier 76. We have Reaper and Soldier 76, the two old bros. Okay, yeah, so this one is specifically, I put, on, put this on the list as Reaper and Soldier 76. So not in their Overwatch days, but post Overwatch. And uh, this one is kind of a weird thing because, you know, they're they're antagonists, grumbling, gripes against each other, but there's this weird camaraderie, I feel like, that's left over from the old days and, and maybe even strengthened from the fact that they're still fighting, even if they're enemies now. It's like a, there's like a respect sort of thing going on. It's very much um, Batman and Superman calling Reaper, calling Soldier 76, uh, you always were a Boy Scout and like Soldier yeah. 76. Uh, what was it? You take this bad guy thing well. Like clearly they've had some discussion of like, hmm. like I can imagine them in their glory days being like, "Wow, Gabe, you could really be a bad guy if you try." <laughs> or something. <laughs> or at least I see like a personality quiz being like, "I got Batman." <laughs> no, Gabe, I totally see that. No, like, yeah, you're, you're kind of Batman. <laughs> Fifth, sixth up. We have Anna and Reinhardt. Two old soldiers, uh, reunited after a long time. Um, there's a unique element that, unlike on the opposite end of like Lucio and Diva, these are uh, two of the oldest characters who have been through the most, and they're they're both still very positive, but they, they're kind of hardened. They've been around the world. They've, they've lost friends and family. You know, Reinhardt thought Anna mm-hmm. was dead, um, etc. You know, they've got this great exchange. You know, with the whole like, you know, you you look great and you look lovely as ever. Mm-hmm. And I know, you know, some people read into that as a very romantic thing, but uh, for me, there's just also a layer of, like, you know, old friends coming back and, and having lived so much life that they're not afraid to say just, like, whatever comes to mind, sort of, you yeah. know, you know? Anna and Reinhardt especially have an immediate chemistry from, like, their starting line, but also they go really well together. So therefore, not only have people written them together because, like, story puts them together, but also gameplay puts them together. And last but not least, we have Sombra and Reaper. I almost feel like Widowmaker could also be put into this. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Sombra, Widowmaker, Reaper. Reaper. Team Talon. Uh, I think immediately once those three became a trio due to the infiltration short, I'm pretty sure I saw some comparisons to Team Rocket. <laughs> so this is another one where like in the game and in the, in the animatic, uh, the animation there's there's some uh, interesting you know dialogues and, and jives back and forth but I think again I fell in love with this one more because of the friendship comics I saw you know where like they're all kind of at the base and and there's the, the jokey ones about you know like Reaper not knowing technology and and Sombra helping with the Wi-Fi password uh, but then also uh, the idea that they are you know all damaged individuals you know and and that Reapers. Uh, curse, as he calls it, is actually hurting him, you know, and that Sombra might, you know, kind of be like, how you doing, Gabe? Like, can I call you Gabe? And just kind of like trying to pierce that over-the-top professional hitman that he is to get to the real person underneath. Uh, I've seen a lot of good connections and um, that uh, Sombra is from Mexico and uh, Reaper has uh, Mexican descent, most likely, from the sound of his name and some lore we've dished out from him, so the idea of them having some common ground of like having just you know a culture that they can both share the fact that Widowmaker and Sombra both supposed to be kind of like deadly and going after what they want and therefore they could connect them that Widowmaker and Reaper obviously just connecting because they just have a hate for Overwatch and just like there's a reason for all of them to hang out with each other and something for them to bond over even if it's just hating something together yeah so I just thought about in the the first opening introduction of Overwatch where uh, Widowmaker does a little grappling hook 
and then grabs Reaper. Mm-hmm. And like, She's a very strong lady. She carries <laughs> Reaper out. Reaper's like, I'm good. I'm down for this. <laughs> also, it was a very strong grappling hook, with, which apparently attached onto a cloud somewhere. <laughs> if you watch it, a guy. If, if you watch it. <laughs> The grappling hook goes into the sky, and then you never see what it connected to. Clearly, there was a cop who just like waiting there, and Winston jumps out in time to just like see them fly away. Or there was yeah, one of the jump uh, the helicopters shot down a grappling hook as Widowmaker shot her grappling hook. They met in the middle, they held hands, and they pulled them up into the sky. I mean, wasn't Winston? Didn't Winston and Widowmaker come crashing through on the windows? Like they came. Yep, from they somewhere. also fell out of a cloud. <laughs> they came from somewhere. <laughs> fell from the sky because we yeah, have fighting like gods. Fun mm-hmm. to Earth for us poor mortals. Yeah, so we can learn about Overwatch. This concludes the seven Overwatch friendships. Top seven friends of Overwatch. <laughs> Top seven because we gotta have those buzzwords or you won't click on the video. Thank you guys for watching so much. If you like this, you know, check out some of the Overwatch animations. Be sure to leave a comment about your favorite friendship in Overwatch. Uh, he's pointing to things I'm gonna edit in. Down below, comments, subscription here. Uh, I'm Toy King 7 this is my channel, Toy King Studios, and I hope to see more of you guys in the new year.